So next step um, is to get this profile for the demo application. So is it okay for everyone or not? So just tell you what I did. So I'm in this folder. So in the profiling symphony demo that we just downloaded. So the composer install is done. It asks for a question. I just hit enter at the end. The next step is to run um, this. So we run the PHP server, the standalone PHP server. Maybe it's not a good idea to put in black. Okay. Only this line. And then on my Chrome browser, I can go to this. So this is only if you set up the host configuration. So now we can browse the application and we can play with it. Um, yes, so. Thank you. So then I can do that profile. Waiting for the data to be sent to the server. So then I can view the profile. Is everyone okay with this step? Did you get this graph? Yes? Okay. So now we can see how the Symfony application uh, is built, how it behaves, how it works. So um, we will, of course, uh, see the call graph of a typical Symfony application. So this is uh, the important point here is that. Um, with this kind of tools, with this kind of data information you have about your application, uh, it's now possible to compare what you expect from the behavior of your application and how it really performs. Uh, performs in terms of performance, but just maybe in terms of behavior. Because quite often, when you look at the graph, you will have questions, will say, what, I don't understand this part of the application. I don't understand this part of the call. And this is the kind of uh, questions that um, have maybe performance issues behind. Um, we profiled Blackfire with Blackfire, so the pages you are seeing are, of course, Symfony application. And we enhanced the performance of Blackfire just by using Blackfire on it and seeing that, for example, we had some service configuration um, and that we booted uh, or some services were just booted at kernel boot time uh, for no reason. So we were slowing um, every page for no reason. And this is something maybe the developer who did that at some point said, OK, I'm going fast on this point, uh, on this definition, on this service, doing it that way. Uh, and then maybe we forgot about it. And just by month after that, also weeks, looking at the call graph, we can say, OK, up, 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 there is an issue. Everyone is paying for this job we didn't do correctly. Let's fix it now. So. In the call graph, you can learn about things you forgot to remove, things that are triggered that shouldn't, and things like that. 
So in this application, um, we can see that we have this PDU execute statement, uh, which is just uh, the time we spent on doing uh, the SQL query. So it's already a, a great percentage, 20% of the time spent on this application. Uh, we also write something to the disk. I don't know why. So, okay, now I know why. So the color of our file put content is the file profiler storage. So this is the part of the application that handles the toolbar. So we gather data in Symfony itself. And of course, that, this, adds, this adds overhead. Um, so if we look at the call graph, we'll see parts that are just our application and parts that are also just Symfony um, adding the developer mode. Which means that we can do something else. Uh, I will use a feature now on Blackfair, uh, which is the comparison feature. I didn't talk about it right now. So I'm back on my timeline. OK, so this is the profile I just did. Um, now I'm doing something on my here, uh, wait a minute, not this one. Let's close it. I have too many tabs open. Okay. So let's close this one back here. So this is my server running. Okay. So I stop it. And now I add this. So minus minus of prod. So back here. Now I have the same app, but the Symphony toolbar is gone. So let's profile this one again. OK. So now we have a different call graph, and this call graph is for the same page, the same application in prod mode. So we, saw, we can see that if we compare here by, eh, by looking at the page, we have 130 milliseconds. On this one, we have 90 something milliseconds. So, of course, removing um, the toolbar and instrumentation um, makes the page faster. Um, but there's an interesting feature here that we are going to use, which is the comparison feature. So I'm back on the, time, on the timeline of Blackfire, and now I'm able to compare. So I will compare uh, the demo application in prod mode and non-prod mode in dev mode. So I'm going on this page, and I'm taking, for example, I'm going from the fastest, fastest uh, page and I wanted to compare to the slowest one, so the first we did. And this is going to generate a call graph that is not exactly the same as the previous. Now this is a comparison call graph uh, that will highlight the difference between uh, the two execution, two samples of the application. So when, okay, okay. So now this is uh, the difference between the two applications. So we can see many things. The first thing is that when we switch in the dev mode, uh, we have an overhead of four, um, 40 milliseconds. We can see that um, in red, we took this path now where previously we were taking the blue path, which means that previously we can, it's very easy to spot because here we see that, maybe, is the zoom okay? Maybe I can zoom a bit. Okay, this is a bit. 
it's quite enormous. <laughs> so, of course, we, do, we don't take the same code path in the front controller, so we take a router dev and router prod controller, and then we can continue and see that, let's see, if we continue, we can see that we have a prepare statement that is not executed in the same way. I don't know, I don't know why. I, I think it's not related to uh, PHP because I don't expect um, the um, SQL server or the PHP application to be different from this one, but I don't know, maybe, maybe there is a reason. I don't have for this one. We can also see that the file put content uh, is new. So in this, uh, in the most changing functions, we have this one, PDO prepare. So we just looked at, I don't have any reason for now. It's a surprise. So maybe just some temporary issue. Maybe there's a reason I can say now. That's the goal of the tool is not to explain, it's just to tell you what happened. Um, then we have this file put content. So we saw previously that the profiler were just writing to the disk to see this. So file put content. Uh, and we can continue. So we have less, or when we enable the env mode, we have more classes that are loaded. So we have an overhead that is related just to loading more classes. File exist is directly related to that. File and time also. So we removed a bunch of things. I don't know. Okay. Is everyone okay? Every, has everyone displayed this kind of graph? Okay, let's continue. So I want to show you that there are more ways to trigger a profile. Um, wait. Okay, I, well, we'll see that later. So for every page, now I'm still in this, um, there are several ways to profile the page. So one we, we did just now is um, using the companion, this one. Um, but we can also profile using this, the profiler of the Chrome browser. Because on this one, we can see that we have several requests for assets. I don't think there is uh, any Ajax request here. But still, uh, f at least for the first page, we have a, a cool feature of browsers, which is this copy as curl. So I'm going to do so. It's right click on here and copy as curl. And now I can go into a new tab of my Vagon box. Do we have curl installed? Yes. Then I'm able to just blackfire the page. So I'm doing blackfire curl and the page I'm profiling. There's just an issue here, which is that I'm inside the box, so I might have to just change the host name. So network is so slow here. So it's again, so it's almost the same experience. So we have this progress bar. We have the profile that is being sent to the, to the UI. And now I can open the link and see the call graph for this page. So this is the way to profile uh, Ajax requests. Because in the profiler, in the Chrome profiler, of course, this is the main request, but there are also more. You could profile, there's no PHP, so uh, there's no point in doing, it, in doing it. But this is the way we can also profile Ajax 
request. So just open it, copy as curl, hit black fire, passed, and let's go. So as you saw, we also are able to profile common line scripts, only, not only web pages. So for example, if I want to profile this composer, uh, not this one here, I have composer, let's say update. So I'm able to say black fair run composer update. This is going to take a bit of time. I don't know if uh, you go past the end. Maybe it's not a good idea to profile this one with the network. Will it work? We'll see. So while it, this is running, OK. So I'm just going in another tab. Don't do that on your box. Um, you don't require to do so. So back on this. Um, so we have this application running in the prod environment. So I'm going to stop it. Um, and now I'm going to enable Xdebug. We're going to profile with Xdebug to see and to compare the thing. So I'm going, so please do that also. Um, well, how should I enable that? I'm not sure. Wait. Okay, so it's Okay, so the magic common is this one. So you do that. And once you did that, you should be able to have XDB working. So PHP minus minus R E I and then we enable the XDB. So now let's start the application again. Maybe okay. I'm dropping this because it doesn't it's too slow. Um, get back to this. So we have the same app, it's still in the prod environment. And I'm profiling it. Maybe I should So this is the same page with Xdebug enabled. Uh, yeah. So there's a difference. Well, look, let me look at this. So now I'm, I wanted to compare the same page 
but I did not take a sample for the same page. Okay. <clears throat> so what I just did is that, well, let me get back to the, to the timeline. So if you remember, um, so this, the, the last on top profile, is the profile of uh, the page, set values, no, no, uh, with uh, xdebug enabled. And the previous one is the same page. I profiled it with black fur curl, the command line. So it's basically the same page because it's exactly the same request. So what I wanted to do is, what I will do now is just compare and say, okay, let's go from this one to this one and see the difference. The only difference we know we have is that we have xdebug enabled in one case and not in the other one. So we can already see that we have 32 milliseconds more, which means 60% more. So that's, okay, I'm still, this is not very conclusive if the difference is so high here. So I don't know why the SQL is so, is so different on the prepare statement. Let's profile again. Okay, so. Okay, it's not very conclusive. Um, I propose now that we try to generate um, the same kind of data with Xdebug, so we can see what kind of data and what kind of workflow we have to follow to get the same kind of analysis uh, with another tool. So we change tool. Um, so now I do have, no, not this one, the background, okay, this one, checking if Xdebug is still here, so, okay. So now we have Xdebug enabled, and uh, now we have to figure out how to enable it for profiling. So we have all these environment, um, any settings, so get yeah, that configure all the, all the features of um, Xdebug. So maybe I can show you a bit how and what kind of data we can have. Um, tracing is interesting, and if you never used it, um, I will show you just now. So I'm going to just enable this one. So tracing is off by default, of course. Um, it outputs data in the, in the slash TMP 
uh, folder with a name that begins with trace. So I'm going to change this parameter. Restart this one. Okay, let's close it. Okay, so if you followed me, maybe it was too quick, but I enabled this any settings and I just restarted the PHP, of course, to get the new settings. And then I um, just refreshed the page. So now I'm going to open to see what happened there. So I have two trace files, which means that two requests hit the server. Uh, this is in auto trace mode, which means that each and every request is traced. Uh, you have also a mode where you have to put a flag uh, in the URL. Um, so I don't remember exactly. That's an issue. What I'm going to do is checking the documentation because I can't remember because I don't use the tool too often, which is one issue with uh, this kind, this way of working. So meanwhile, let me open. I don't know if one is bigger. Okay, one is really just the bootstrapping and the other may be more interesting. So this is what we have in the trace file. I'm going to put it very small so you, we can follow the big picture. So this is exactly what happened during the execution of your application. So Xdebug is logging one line at each function call. So we start, it's almost unreadable, but we start with main again, then there is a call to set time limit, require once, error reporting, and so on. Uh, SPL, autoload register, autoload call, some dear name, composer set, blah, 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 blah at the end, and we have four, 500,000 lines uh, of tracing. So this is not useful for uh, performance because the application does not behave the same way when this is enabled. But maybe you have to know it because sometimes some bugs are really hard to find, and this is a very good way to find bugs, because at some point you might not understand how the application behaves at those very small level. You say, this is just impossible. I'm just reading the code and this can happen. And when you read the trace, okay, you can maybe understand and say, ah, this is the reason why I'm getting this behavior. This is a, use, a useful tool. So now I'm going to disable, so stopping this one. And um, let me check this one. So now we have the X debug settings. So we are on the trace section. Let's forget about code coveraging, collecting things for example. Nah, 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 nah. So configuring. So we have profiler enable on or off. So we we are going to just enable this one. So it's again in the, the output will be in the slash tmp cache grind that out. So I disabled this one. Up. What happened? Okay, I'm in my all caps. So this enables profiling for all the pages. 
So now let's start our demo application again. Here we are. So I just refreshed it. And now if I go in the slash TMP folder, I do have some cache grind file. So one is bigger than the other. If we compare, ah, so I disabled tracing, so there's no trace file anymore. So let's open this one. So this is a Volgrind file. So Volgrind is, uh, of course, some special format dedicated to storing profiles, execution profiles. So I will explain you. It's not that hard, but what is inside of this. Um, so you can understand the kind of raw data we have. So there is this header. And then we have a list of events. Events are all uh, and only on the time scale. So we don't profile memory with Xdebug. It's not possible. So we only have time. Time is in terms of milliseconds, uh, microseconds. So we can see that, OK, we have some internal um, function that called set time limit. Then we also have error reporting that has been called. Um, I think this is not, I think this is the number of time the function has been called. And this is the time spent doing so. So if we follow this, we can maybe find some more interesting data. Not that much. So we are only at the beginning of the functions. So as you can see, the file is pretty big. And being pretty big, it means that it took time to be generated and to be written on the disk, uh, which means that this is a source of overhead over the, over the function. So it's not very conclusive reading this. So these are only functions calling other functions with some references. Now to see the data, we need another tool. Uh, the other tool, I don't think you have it, so I'm going to use mine. Uh, I use win cache grind because sometimes Windows is good. And in this case, there's a single binary. And it's a lot easier to install than the same cache grind on Linux because it requires to install so many things that I don't want to execute. So again. OK, so this is the tool. And with this tool, I'm going to open the file that we just generated. So I have to put it somewhere. Uh, accessible. Just give me a second. Okay, I don't know why. What happened? What's wrong with this one?
Wow. What is this? I don't know why I'm not able to do that. So maybe I'm, I should just get out of the virtual machine. Anyway, you, you won't be able to. So this is here, this is here, and Okay, let's try again. So now I again generated cache ground out, but I'm out of the, the virtual machine. I'm not sure why it failed, so I'm just trying now. Let's go for 16. 60 megabytes. Much better. So it looks like the application we're profiling is quite huge. So we just have to wait for this to be generated. If the page is too big, maybe it won't work. That happens. OK, it worked. Let me check something else. Because this is not the tool I wanted. I'm confused. <laughs> okay. I missed. I just made a mistake. It's not win cache grind, it's confusing. It's queue cache grind. Big win cache grind is also for the same thing, but it doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. So again, I'm going in my uh, folder. Summer, summer, come here, workshop. So, here we are. So, this is the file I want. Okay.
there is some process writing in the disk, in the file. I'm going to restart this. Let's go again. Up. No, that's not going to Okay. We are just crashing. So the file were growing, I don't know why, that's another point. Another Okay, let's open Okay. Okay, so much better. So now, um, so this is a QKH grind, um, and this is uh, the first tool we all, we all had or have since years to see um, what happens in the application. So, for example, this is the call map. Where is my I don't know where is my main entry point. Okay, here we are. So here we have the application. Maybe I didn't took the right profile. This profile is not very interesting. Okay, so this is the same kind of tool. So this represents also a call graph and basically it's the same information that Blackfire display. So we have main that is calling composer, autoloader, initialization, and so on. So this is a call graph of just one function call. I don't know why and what happens. I think Xdebug and profiling is harder or doesn't work well with the internal PHP server. So this tool, uh, you can use it. Um, that's another tool. As you have seen, the difficulties are that you have to understand how things work, so you understand that you have to enable this to get the file, to get the right program to open the file, and working condition is more complicated. So now, We're going to try with. Um, do you have any question on Nix debug? So now I'm trying to. Uh, we will install XHProf so you can profile with it. The good thing with XHProf is that it allows you to get raw data, and we will look at the raw data, and they are easier to understand than. Uh, the one from Xdebug. So, I'm stopping everything. Stop here. Even, okay, let's keep two tabs. Hopla, everything is crashing. Okay, 
So I'm going to disable Xdebug because we don't want to use it. Uh, it will add overhead again, so let's disable it. Um, you can do it also. If you want to re-enable re -enable it later, you should uh, not forget. Okay, so this is the mods available in the beginning config, but I should not forget to disable the profiler because, of course, if I keep it enabled, it will just be a nightmare. So now I'm sure that whenever I re-enable it, I won't forget about that. So XHProf is not installed on the vagrant, um, but you can install it with um, Pickle. So this is the command to install it. Oh. It's not very, so you have to sudo pickle install and then it's not an officially released version. So it's channel um, slash slash pickle.php.net xhprof. So this will get through a compile stage and then you will have to enable and load the extension. So I did it in uh, the pause, so I'm not doing it now. Uh, maybe I should. Okay, so this is the command. sudo pickle install. Okay, for everyone. Then, the easiest to enable it is to um, wait, this one? No. I was right. Oh. You just open your php.ini file. So we are in CLI mode, so we're going to open the PHP ini of the CLI. And then at the end, I just added this extension xhprof.so. So once this is done, you should do this. Then, okay, XHProf is installed. So XHProf is a program that adds um, two main functions. Let's reopen this. So xhprof enable and then xhprof disable let's run this okay so this is let me show you the file again. So we have XHProf enable, which means that we enable the profiler. So now the engine, the extension has, is collecting data. So now we are calling functions. So let's this one uh, STL in. And then we say stop profiling, we're done. Um, so this returns the data gathered during the execution. So when I run this, I get this. So if you look at this, that's how XHProf outputs the data. So it's an array. The array, has, the keys are color, coli pairs, which means that here we have main that has called uh, STLN. Um, and the city means count time. So 
it's how many times this function has been called by this other function. So here we called uh, STLN only once. And WT is for world time, so world time is the time it took in, in microseconds to execute this call. And then we have the XHPROF disabled that is profiled itself that we called once and that was very fast, one millisecond. If we're going to um, have another function, let's say I create some array. Then maybe Okay, let's apply a CLN on our array, run this again. So now, up in the array, we can see that RMAP has called STLN three times, that the size of our array, that it took in the total uh, seven microseconds. And we also called RMAP once, and it took 32 milliseconds, and then we disabled. And the world time is zero because um, we can't, it was too quick. So let me show you more features. When you enable, I think, I'm not sure, no. I don't remember the name. Defined functions, constants. Just the S. So there are a few features that we can enable optionally. And this is the CPU feature, which means that we are now going to profile the CPU time. So here we can see that, for example, in this case, a remap in terms of wall time took 93 milliseconds, and in terms of CPU time, it took 88 milliseconds. Now, to explain the difference, I have to tell you a bit more about uh, XHProf. So, XHProf is open source, so you can read the code. Um, what I'm doing now is that um, I told you at the beginning that you have to be aware of how the tool behaves, how it is built. That's a good point of open source software. And uh, in this case, the world time is taken um, on XHPROF. They have some clever trick, which is that at the beginning, um, when you enable profiling, profiling they are building, um, they are taking a sample of the time, and they are, they are calculating the time it takes for 100 or a few hundred CPU cycles to complete. So they, they take the timer of the system, they wait one millisecond, or one, I don't remember exactly the numbers, and they count the number of CPU cycles that uh, happened during this time. That way they know how much time one cycle is. And then they go to the uh, assembler uh, level of the CPU and they, and they get access to a register in the CPU which is the number which is increased at each uh, CPU cycle. So this register is a special, uh, special register that counts the number of cycles that the CPU spent. So by knowing the previous number, how many times I spent by CPU cycle and reading this register, they are able to calculate time very quickly, because reading a CPU register is the fastest operation on a CPU, and then afterwards, afterwards they can just multiply by this. 
But this has a pretty big issue, which is that in reality, CPU today are very complicated, and once the clock is changing dynamically, for example. Uh, the clock of our CPU is changing over time. So now, Facebook did this hypothesis uh, that the clock was just constant, because at least constant for the duration of the application. So if your page is 100 milliseconds, um, this way of measuring the time is valid only if the CPU doesn't change the frequency in middle, in the middle of these hundreds of milliseconds. So that's how they did that. Now, it, and it's a, also a reason why the, it's, it adds a very low overhead. Now, uh, on the CPU, for the CPU it's much more complicated because the CPU time is a syscall. It's only, only the kernel, the Linux kernel in this case, knows how much time it gave to your process and it gave to other processes. Which means that the way we measure time uh, for the whole time and we measure time for the CPU time are measured completely differently, which means we can't reason about compare with, we can't compare them. It's just plain wrong to compare the whole time and the CPU time using XHProf because of what I just explained to you, because of the way we measure things. So you can take decision on that. So what you can do with XHProf is looking only at the whole time, only at the CPU time. This is really fine. Don't do comparison. And there are also more flag um, memory. So this will add these two dimensions. So this is memory usage and this is peak memory usage. So peak memory usage, you know it. It's the how much calling this function increased, by how much it, it, it increased the peak memory, memory usage of your application. So the peak memory usage only grows, of course. It's a peak. So sometimes the real memory usage has a peak and then everyone, everything is behind. And by looking at the peak memory usage and the most important contribution to the peak memory usage, you can see which function created the highest spike on your memory profile. The memory usage is much more complicated to reason about uh, because the memory usage is um, the difference. So at each function call, before the function you take the real instant memory usage and after the function call you take again the same measure of the instant memory usage. And the difference is the side effect, uh, the memory side effect of your um, function call. Side effect or uh, leak. We can also say memory leak because if by calling a function you increase the memory after leaving a function, we can call that a leak. For many applications it's uh, fine to create leaks because at some point some other part of the code is aware of the leak and can free the memory. Um, it's an issue when you talk about memory leaks in C, of course, we are talking about uh, an issue. In PHP, it's normal. You create a global in the PHP function, it's a leak in terms of memory. Um, but this difference can also be negative, of course. So the number in this very line, the MU, memory usage, can be negative, which means that this function freed memory. By calling this function, in this situation, you freed memory. This is very difficult to reason about this dimension. If you look at the memory usage dimension, you say, okay, I have zero main, because main starts at some point and ends at the same point. So you start with uh, no memory, and then you look, okay, so this is just to explain you. Of course, you can. So XHProf now comes with some scripts. I don't know where they put it, so I'm going to find a bit. Because uh, there is also another function. Um, let me show you.
Okay. So now there is XHProf sample enable and sample disable. Sample enable and sample disable is uh, this measuring strategy where you take a sample every uh, at a some rate and you dump the stack trace. Um, this doesn't work here. Because, okay, now it works. But if you look at this, this is the output of XHProf uh, sample enable disable, in fact. So the key is the time offset. So this is the microsecond offset. And so this is seconds, and this is sub-seconds. So this is uh, 500 milliseconds. And if you look at this, the difference is 100 milliseconds. So Facebook compiled their uh, XHProf to sample at one 100 millisecond resolution, which means it means for typical application at most 10 points for one second for 10 points for one second page. So I hope most of your pages are under one second, maybe under three seconds at least. So it means 30 points. So you can reason about. You can recompile the application, of course, uh, recompile the source code to get a higher resolution. That would be possible. So in this case, we learned that sampling one second worth of this script means we were tense time in the sleep, of course. So that's the only features that XHProf provides as a, an extension. And it's already really great. Let me do something. Um, here, tuck, tuck, tuck. Um. <laughs> so now I'm taking my front control of the Symphony demo application. So here we are, and I'm modifying it to XHProf enable. And now I'm doing something a bit more. Um, I want to get the profile at the end of the function, so I can modify it here after the terminator. Let's do it this way. So if I do that, where's my cursor? Okay. This is an array, okay? And so now I have to put it somewhere. Let's put it... Um, okay? So I am take the array, I serialize it, Maybe JSON, okay, let's start with the serialize, we'll see. This is our page. Mm. Where the file? Okay, it's in web profile. So this is our file. I'm just opening it to see the output, but it's a serialized array. <coughs> and in terms of size, no, nah, doesn't work. Okay, it's. 345 kilobytes. Uh, let me JSON encode it. Sorry, I'm just. Um, okay. So 
so we can see it. Okay, easier. Okay, so now this is the data that we have from XHProf. This is really interesting to look at because it's quite simple. And it's also uh, the same kind of data that all profilers have. So in Blackfire, basically, we have raw data that are almost the same. And the file, the call grind file that I showed you, is also the same story. It's just writing color coli pairs and the cost related. So now I can take a random line here, and this one, for example, says, let's take this one. So this, there is this separator here. Maybe I can zoom a bit, but OK. So now we have this one. So this is on kernel request of the router listener. That's called parameter bag set just once. And it took one millisecond. So this one is not interesting. Maybe looking at random things is not that easy or that interesting, but I can find SPL autoload call. So for example, here. We have this function, SPLOTLOAD call, that has been called once by the app prod, na 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 na. Once there, once there. We also have some class exists somewhere in the code. I missed, the, where is that? Okay, so this one is also interesting. So you know that class exists tries to load the class when uh, it can find it currently loaded. So there are three class exists that are responsible for uh, SPL to load call. And the three calls took uh, a few microseconds, a few hundred microseconds. Um, what's important here is also that we don't know which call to class exist did that. It's only color call pairs, and we aggregated and we lost information about deeper stack trace. So the call graph that everyone shows, like this one, um, they are based only on color and coli pairs, which means that in the general case, you can say class exist has been called by this and not in this one, by this and by this also. So you can say A called B called C. You can never say that. OK. So now we are, XHPOF um, has a few tools around. Um, I don't remember the name, so let's find that. So this is the source code of XHProf. So the source code, the most important piece of the source code is the example extension folder, this one. So this is the C part. So this is what we compile. And there are some PHP code around that allows to do something with the data. Like this one. Maybe not this one. <laughs> they change a bit. 
Je peux... Ok. Let's clone this so that I can get it. It's not that fast. So XHPROF comes with um, a PHP tool. I don't know why it's so slow to unpack, but um, so I'm cloning this repository, and this repository has some uh, files. So maybe not this one, maybe this one's better. And here, uh, there are PHP uh, scripts that um, can dump the array generated by the function, the array we saw together. Um, dump it as a serialized file, and then view it um, with dot. And dot is a tool that is in the graphviz package. So I just uh, did this. So happy to get installed GraphViz. GraphViz provides dot, and dot is a generic tool to, this, to generate graphs. So in this PHP, they have built um, a converter from their own uh, serialized array format to the dot file that is required for dot to generate uh, the graph. So now we're waiting for the network. Okay. Are you able to download the file to install it?
So as you can see, XHPOF is a pretty raw solution we are trying to build, and this is something you will have to do um, when you want to use it. The basic C extension is really good. Now it's not maintained anymore, but at least not as much as we'd like to. Um, so I have to my, my two console. So, so the way um, XHPOF wants the data is a serialized array. So I'm going to just go again to my web app.php, change the file put content back to serialize. Okay. And run. Ah, there's another thing. Okay, now we can just generate the file. So this is the file. This is, again, our demo application. So here we are. So now we have this web profile file. Here we are. Um, there is another thing. Not this one. Which one? I'm moving the file I'm to the Symfony demo file. I'm moving it um, to the XHPROF folder here. So now I'm going to my XHPROF folder and I'm starting a dedicated, oh, this is another comment, I'm starting a dedicated PHP, so on a custom port, so now here we are. The runners not, are not here. Wait a minute. Um, where is it looking for? Ah, I don't remember where they put their file. Can make it work.
don't know why. I'm sorry. I should have tried. Okay. I'm sorry I can't manage to make it work. <laughs> We have five minutes left. Do you have any question? Yes? If we can look at the black fire profile of them application. Yes. Could you go through how you would uh, try to optimize that app? Yes. And uh, something not complicated, just where would you go first and go look at the code to try and optimize it? Yes, of course. Let's go, maybe, so I'm back to the timeline. So this one. Mm. I took an old profile. So I would, this is an old profile. I clicked on the, an old profile, okay. So I would look at the core graph looking for uh, some surprise, things I can't explain easily. So the first thing is that um, I would look at the first function listed here. So yes, exactly. I would look at, at first, I always look at the exclusive time and the most exclusive time consuming functions because um, these are the functions that in themselves consume um, things, CPU or anything else. And um, so if you do a lot of file exist, for example, maybe you shouldn't, maybe your application, and maybe you forgot to remove some check, I don't know where. That's one way. Uh, maybe you will find that PDO um, execute is uh, consuming. So in this case, it's the database that should be checked. Um, I had, yes, that's, that's how I would, I would do that. And you will see also that you shouldn't, um, by looking at the graph, you shouldn't look at only at the red path because the red path is usually uh, normal. I mean, it's normal that the red path is the red path because it's just how your application is structured. So in Symfony, it's always normal to have handle for the kernel and for the dispatch to be red because that's the function that call everything else. But sometimes, by looking at the other um, secondary path. So for example, we have this one here. It's nine persons. And you can wonder for secondary path if they are worth of not or not. I don't know if it's the case in this application, but some secondary path might be, for example, monologue. So you have a logger. It's of course not the main path of your application because your application doesn't log only. But at some point, you can just look at the graph. I don't know if this, maybe this one. So here we have this path. It's seven person doing monologue debug. Is that 7% of total time? Yes. Okay. Yes. So for example, you can say, OK, seven person here, that's an easy win if I can remove it. Or maybe I forgot to lower the log level, maybe it's normal because you're in dev environment, um, but this is a good way to spot and to say, okay, 7% could be gone for free. Um, I remember some, there is KNP uh, menu bundle, so um, for complex menu, this is, uh, this is taking, what that? For complex menus, this, is, this can be big. And we looked at an application that used this to build its menu system. And we 
saw that it was taking 30% of the application. So it's a secondary path, but 30% of the application doing just a menu, it's too big. And you don't know that when you look at the code. You say, okay, I delegate this part of the application to the bundle, it's fine. When you look at the price, you pay for that, you say, okay, maybe not. Maybe let's do it another way. After, there are some functions uh, that um, you, we know have solutions. So this is something you will learn um, when looking at this, but for, of course the autoloader is something that you should care about. So be sure to dump optimized class map with compiler, composer uh, install dash dash uh, optimized because this dumps uh, pre-compiled uh, loading maps. And if you look at the call graph before and after, the difference is huge. So of course, you have to enable that. And with Blackfire, you can see that with XHPro, of course, and the other tool. And there are... Yes, you can do that, yes. There's a composer install minus O, and if you do minus O, the composer will do um, an extra work to dump a class map of all the classes it found in a file that is already here. So it will be free from doing a file exist on every folder. Any question? So, okay, so it's, thank you for attending the workshop. I hope you learned uh, a few things. Thank you.